much. But their skins, except we're tanned by exposure, are as white as ours. Here's these Irish people starving from the potato famine. Kingsley drives by and looks at them and says, Oh, these poor white chimpanzees. He thought they hadn't evolved as far. The Mormons teach, Mormons in this life, or Negroes in this life, are denied the priesthood. Negroes are not equal with other races. It's the Lord's doing. It's based on His law of spiritual uh, laws of justice and grows out of the lack of spiritual valiance of those concerned in the first estate. See, the Mormons teach babies in heaven are born first. The Heavenly Father has thousands of wives and has spirit babies. If they're a good spirit baby, when they come to earth, they get a white skinned body. If they're a bad spirit baby, they get a black skinned body. That's what they teach. Mormon doctrine by Bruce McConkie. He said, it's a divine decree. Cain, Ham, and the whole Negro race have been cursed with black skin, the mark of Cain. Mormon Apostle Peterson said, If there's a drop of Negro blood in my children, as I've read to you, they receive the curse. Mormon President Brigham Young said, Shall I tell you the law of God regarding the African race? If the white man who belongs to the chosen seed mixes his, seed, mixes his blood with the seed of Cain, under the, pen, uh, uh, the penalty under the law of God is death on the spot. This will always be so. You should read some books about Mormonism and see what they've done in the last few hundred years over this teaching of uh, racial superiority. See, racism was popular in the 1800s. I mean, they would buy the slaves and put them on ships and pack them in as tight as they could. If a bunch died, oh well, save as many as you can. But they sold them on the market. Some people thought the leaders, I mean, the, some leaders in America thought the Aborigines were not as evolved as the white man because the Aborigines have a bigger jaw. Their jaw bones are bigger. Uh, Eskimos in, Australia, in uh, Alaska have the same thing. They have bigger jaw bones. And they said, well, that's because they've evolved. They're not as evolved from the apes as we are. No, it's because they use their jaws all the time like a vice. They don't carry a toolbox around with them. They wander around a lot, so they don't want to carry 50 pounds of tools. When they want to skin the, pull the skin off of something, they hold it in their teeth and pull the skin off. They use their teeth. They use their jaw muscles all the time. And any bodybuilder will tell you the more you use your muscles, the bigger your bones get. It actually develops the bones also. The mental life of savages rises little above that of higher mammals, especially the apes, with which they are generally connected, genetically connected. The intelligence moves within the narrowest bounds, and one can no more or less speak of their reason than that of the more intelligent animals. These lower races, such as the Vedas or Australian Negroes, are psychologically nearer to the mammals, apes or dogs, than to civilized Europeans. We must, therefore, assign a totally different value to their lives. That's Ernst Haeckel, the guy that lied about the gill slits. At the beginning of the white settlement, this is in Australia, there were an estimated 300,000 Aborigines all over Australia. Aborigines were viewed by the settlers as primitive, savage, unchanging. In addition to warfare killing, flour, or water, flour, and sugar were poisoned, and diseases like smallpox, measles, and influenza were in introduced intentionally to lower the population. It was the law. You could kill Aborigines if you wanted. How many saw the movie Quigley Down Under, where he was brought in to kill the Aborigines? Because he was a marksman. Every single Tasmanian Aborigine was killed. Why? I think the evolution theory is directly responsible for what happened to the slaughter of the Aborigines. These two people went to Australia to collect skulls for the museums in America. Here's your article right here. A New South Wales missionary was a horrified witness to the slaughter by mounted police of a group of dozens of Aboriginal men, women, and children. Forty-five heads were boiled down and the best ten skulls packed off for overseas. They shot them just to get the bones. Smithsonian has 33,000 sets of human remains in their basement. They call it the Army of the Potomac. These are used as evidence for evolution. Charles Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton, started a movement called the eugenics movement to purify the human race. Let's get rid of some of these inferior races. They drew in from all branches of science to make eugenics, to improve humanity. We could spend days talking about eugenics, but these ideas gave rise to American laws that em empowered doctors to sterilize people they judged to be unfit. As a result, Black estimates that some 60,000 people were sterilized in the United States over the course of the 20th century. Some doctor thought, oh, they're not fit to be a mom or a dad. They sterilized him. It's in America. The most chilling, though, were the ways which American eugenics introduced, influenced their German counterparts. Hitler said, 
I have studied with great interest the laws of several American states concerning the prevention and reproduction by people whose progeny would, in all probability, be of no value or be injurious to the racial stock. 1904, St. Louis had the World's Fair. They brought in 2,000 what they said were primitive people and had a big display about the primitive people to demonstrate the superiority of the white man. That's 100 years ago, folks. Oda Benga was put in a cage with chimpanzees. He was taken away from his wife and two kids. They put him in with the chimpanzees as part of the display so people can come by and laugh at how primitive the pygmies were. He died. He committed suicide. Oda did. He's buried in Lynchburg, Virginia. Roosevelt thought the Indians were an inferior species because they hadn't evolved as far. Roosevelt said, I wish the wrong people could be prevented entirely from breeding. He thought the immigrants from Europe, Scotland, Ireland, and the Orient were a threat to American society. How many of you have ancestors from one of those places? Oh, you're inferior species, according to these guys, okay? In 1871, Congress scrapped all treaties with the Indians and moved them off to the reservation system they're still using today. The Cherokees, down where we're from in Florida in that area, were moved off to Oklahoma, or to Indiana, yeah, Oklahoma, Indian Territory. One third of them died along the forced journey, called the Trail of Tears, because our leaders thought they were an inferior species. We could spend all day on that one. The Bible says we've all got one father. No reason to be a racist. All God hath made of one blood all nations of men to dwell upon the earth. Darwin also said, a married man is a poor slave, worse than a Negro. I never met his wife, but I, you know. Um, <laughs> if a guy said that, if a college professor said that today, how long would he keep his job? Or his life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Darwin said, the chief distinction in intellectual powers of the two sexes is shown by man's attaining to a higher eminence in whatever he takes up than can woman. Whether requiring deep thought, reason, or imagination, or merely the use of senses and hands, the average mental power in man must be above that of women. He said, man has ultimately become superior to women, poetry, strength, voice, etc. Darwin believed in inbreeding. He married his first cousin, Emma Wedgwood. He wanted to have a superior stock. They produced 10 children. Mary died shortly after birth. Anne died at age 10. Robert Bourne, retarded, died at 19 months. Henrietta had a serious nervous breakdown. Three of his other six sons, three of his six sons were so ill, they ill so often, Charles thought they were semi-invalids. So much for your superior stock, Charlie. Evolution is a bad tree, has a bad root, brings forth evil fruit. Evolution is the foundation for immorality. It's the foundation for humanism, the foundation for racism. And now we're going to cover evolution is the foundation philosophy for Nazism, communism, and the New World Order. Evolution, the foundation for Nazism. Why did Hitler do what he did? Now, Mussolini, the dictator in Italy, thought the Italians were the superior species that deserved to rule the world. So did the Germans, so they linked up together for a while. So they thought, well, we'll just rule it together, and then when we get too many people, we'll decide between the two of us who's the strongest. Mussolini and Hitler were strong believers in evolution. Now, Hitler believed the Germans were the superior race that deserved to rule the world. Uh, Arthur Keith said, the German Fuhrer has consistently sought to make the practice of Germany conform to the theory of evolution. A direct line runs from Darwin through the father of eugenics movement, Darwin's cousin Francis Galton, to the extermination camps of Nazi Europe. Hitler's book that he wrote, Mein Kampf, written in 1924 while he was in, much of it while he was in prison, between the two wars, it's full of evolution. You ought to read the book. It's, just, it's a boring read for one thing, but it's just absolutely full of his evolution philosophy. Since the time he was a boy, he was dominated by this one thinking that one race is superior to another because of evolution. In this book, While Six Million Died, it tells about the story where Hitler offered to send the Jews to anybody who would take them. Hitler said, do you want the Jews? I'll send them to you on luxury ships if you want them. Did you know America refused to take the Jews? Roosevelt said, we don't want them. America had very racist immigration policies before World War II. Long stories there. You can read about the ship that came to Cuba and tried to unload their, prison, tried to unload their Jews and said, they said, we don't want them. They sailed all the way up the east coast of America. Every port in America refused to allow 900-some Jews to get off the boat. So they sent them back to Europe. In Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, he said, no more than nature desires the mating of weaker with stronger individuals, even less does she desire the blending of a higher with a lower race. 
He talked about the mingling of Aryan blood and lower peoples. This is all based on a philosophy called evolution. One race has evolved farther than the rest. Now, who's an, who's an Aryan? And what are these lower peoples, anyway? Well, Hitler taught that the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegians were close to pure Aryan. Did you follow all that? The blonde-haired, <laughs> blue-eyed Norwegian, born in the daily dog. And he thought the Germans were mostly Aryan. The Mediterraneans are slightly Aryan. <laughs> Slavics are half Aryan, half ape. Orientals are slightly ape, but the black Africans are mostly ape, and the Jews are close to pure ape. Hitler killed the Jews because of his evolution thinking. We fought a really big war. Probably 100 million people died in World War II altogether because of that stupid theory. It's not just dumb, folks. It's dangerous. Hitler also hated the black people. 1936, Olympics were held in Germany. Jesse Owens, the black American athlete, won the most gold medals, and Hitler walked out of the stadium. He said, it's not fair to make my men race against this animal. One of the Jewish prisoners who survived the Holocaust said, there's a difference between those who look upon their fellow human beings as common creatures of a common creator and those who look upon them as conglomerate of biologicals and chemicals. Is the human body nothing but chemicals? That's what Hitler thought. Man, we can get so many ounces of soap out of them and so many ounces of grease and so many ounces of hair and, you know, just chemicals. I've been to Germany several times. I read lots of books about Hitler and the Holocaust just to keep my blood boiling. What Hitler did was because of his belief in evolution. He thought they were an inferior species. So this is not just some kind of academic uh, discussion, folks. This is a dangerous philosophy. There's me at Flossberg concentration camp where they mined all the granite for Hitler's uh, monuments, okay? And millions and millions of people were killed because of Hitler's belief in evolution. Dumb, dumb idea. I stood in that spot where Hitler's standing in that picture, just thinking about this huge conference ground at Nuremberg. Hitler may try to make the individual feel small and the cause seem great. People are doing the same thing today with the young people. Hitler knew how to reach the youth of his nation. He wanted to indoctrinate the young people. By the way, Nazism is still alive and well in America. It's really alive and well in Wisconsin. One man in Skokie, Illinois, near Chicago, told the authorities he killed a plastic surgeon he found in the phone book because these plastic surgeons were making blue-tinted contact lenses and they're diluting the Aryan beauty. Picked him out of the phone book and killed him. Hitler thought that biological evolution was the best force to fight against traditional religion. Hitler said, I regard Christianity as the most fatal seductive lie that ever existed. Now, uh, Lutzer from Moody Bible Institute wrote a great book on Hitler's cross, how Hitler tried to hide behind the cross. But actually, he was anti-Christian in everything he did. You should read the Barman Declaration. Go to the internet and type in Barman Declaration and see what... You wonder, where was the German resistance to Hitler? Where was the Christian resistance to Hitler? Why didn't the Christians do something to stop this guy? Well, we're going to wonder that someday. Why didn't the Christians in America do something to stop the New World Order? Why didn't they do something? Okay? Hitler used Nazi propaganda pictures like this, him walking out of a church with a cross above his head. It's all propaganda. He hated Christianity. Do you know they have Nazi baptisms and Nazi altars? You could be baptized into Nazism. It was a total religion. Hitler said, you tell a lie long enough and loud enough and often enough, the people will believe it. He said, people are more likely to believe a big lie than a small one. By the way, by the, way the Japanese also thought they were a superior species because they had evolved farther. Darwin's book hit Japan, and people just loved it. I mean, the crazy religions they had in Japan at the time, just absorbed evolution right into their thinking. When Darwin's book was translated to Japanese, everybody said, wow, what an amazing theory, evolution. And the next obvious step is, hey, if evolution's true, which race has evolved the farthest? Japanese 